All right, hey, this is Act 2 of the podcast. We're getting right back into it. If you missed Act 1, go back and listen to that thing. Otherwise, this isn't going to make any sense. Okay, see ya. Welcome in and hello to you all. The Eric St. Show Podcast, Act 2. For this Monday, the 18th of November. Little radio news. Today is uh, eight months to the day that I have been broadcasting on Q100. When I started working there, they wanted to sign me to like a uh, like a multi-year contract. And uh, I said, eh, let's not do that. Let's just do one year. You might hate my guts. It's easier this way. We'll just do it. We'll just reconvene. See how we see how we're doing. They said, okay. Eight months to the day. And today is the day when we discuss contract extension, like new contract. Uh, Now, after one year, the butt sniffing process is complete. I am comfortable signing a multi-year deal. I'll be totally honest with you. This is not like I'm getting rich, okay? It's something I really enjoy doing, though. And what the hell, you know? Um, I can't tell you how much I like um, talking with the audience there. It's fun to be on the radio. I've always loved it, even though it's a dying medium. Uh, Up there, it's a little different because... Uh, not everybody is technologically savvy. People actually listen to the radio up there. Again, this is north of the hard living line. So I'm expected that to go well. Uh, it's a little later on today. Hang on. Too warm in here. Jeremy says it's great, great content for this show too. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, we've had a lot of great moments here to discuss on this show. And as you know, this show is news, nonsense, and my personal adventures. And that is, that falls into the uh, personal adventures side of thing. Matt says, Rich Eric loves slumming with the northern dirt people. Kenny says, I like when they call during this podcast and try to request songs. It's been a while, though. I don't know if that's going to happen too much anymore. The phone's automatically forward at 10 a.m. So I think those days are done, but they were fun while they lasted. More radio news. For a while, I've noticed a trend in the radio ratings in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I think that the rest of the world is starting to catch on to the fact that our pals Free Bear and Hot Wings are a pile of shit who have mailed it in on that boring, dead, stale show. Now, we've always known that, but sometimes it takes a while for it to translate into ratings. That appears to be happening now. And I have examples. Uh, It was about a year ago that everybody was bitching about the quality of their show, and Greg said, quote, Our ratings have never been higher. Now, that's debatable. They've always been pretty high for the past 20 years. Uh, I would like to think, though, that the pedigree that that they built, they've been living off of that legacy and just stopped working. The show's no longer hungry. They don't do anything interesting. We all know that. And we benefit from that because of who are these freebeers, which, by the way, that last episode was absolutely spectacular. Um... For some of you, you may not have seen who are these free beers on your podcast app because uh, there was an a RSS update or something like that with Patreon, but uh, it is available on the Patreon app or online. Let me know if you have any trouble with that and I'll clarify it for you. But anyway, Greg had said, hey, our ratings have never been higher. So I get the ratings. I mean, I actually get the in-depth ratings, not the stuff that the public sees. For example, in the category that matters the most, 
adults, all men, all women, age 25 to 54. That is the category that um, drives the most dollars and cents. If you win 25, 54, the radio station has the best opportunity to make money. I found out through the grapevine. I threw up a flare and said, I need ratings. Send them my way. Um, they're number three in QM. All right. Free Bear Not Wings. Where they win is quarter hours. Rating share. But that's not so great. Well, it's been a lot better. It's still number one, but by only this much. Before it was by this much. Huge difference between first and second place. Now... It's a sea hare. One year ago, August, September, October. In August, persons 25-54, they had a 19 share. September, they had a 22.7 share. October of 2023, they had a 22 share. So that means if 100 uh, radios are on, persons 25 to 54, those numbers indicate percentages. 19% of all radios that are adults 25, 54 are on that show. And then like 30 other radio stations, morning shows, compete for the other uh, 80, 81%. That's pretty impressive. And then to follow it up with an even higher number of 22.7 and 22.0. August, September, October. At about that time, Greg announced, well, our ratings have never been higher. Fast forward one year. August, 2024. 13.5 13.5 shares. September, 12.7 shares. October, 11.9. Statistically, half. Their shares have been cut in half. And before, second place, when they would get 20 shares, were like, Second place was eight shares or nine shares. So they would effectively double the number two station. Now, in the month of October in particular, they had an 11.9 share and WSNX Mojo in the morning hot on their uh, heels with an 11.1 share. Why am I bringing this up? Because... It's fucking fun to think that they're fucking failing. These arrogant fucking pricks are seeing that, oh, oh. Molly says, I like Mojo. I didn't know you were in Michigan. Molly, you're in Michigan? I thought you were from out of town. Didn't you discover me through, um... Dude from Winnipeg, Tyler, Wisconsin. How do you know Mojo? Is it because Mojo syndicated and he gets over to Wisconsin? Is that is that what's happening there? Uh, the magic misfit with a horrible comment. Yeah, I don't I don't think that's true at all. Discovered via Squirt School. What the fuck is wrong with you? Um, the magic misfit says Zane hates me. I don't hate anybody. Are you kidding me? Come on now. You think very highly of yourself. If you think I hate you, I heard him from when I was listening to radio for Elvis Duran. That's interesting. Um, anyway, so yeah, I, I, that's big news. Um, also, uh, persons 18 to 49, another key demo. Again, nose diving. Last three months have been a shit show. 
it could turn around for them in a big way. It might not be the bottom of the barrel right now because they're still in first place. But if they drop out of first place in adults 25, 54, or adults 18 to 49, that will be the first time in nearly 20 years that that's happened. All right. Well, welcome back. Uh, I had an eventful staff meeting, not really, uh, from Q100. JC kind of got fussy. I don't know what it was about, but he s- started to get annoyed. And I was like, what the fuck are they doing? It's so awkward. And then his boss, of course, is Cheryl, his wife. And she just glosses over it. Like when he gets pissed off, she kind of just like keeps going. Jeremy says they'll get ratings for the break-ins, but that's all that's interesting on that show anymore. Oh, my God. Those those break-in days are like the most listened to days of the year. They should just do that every day from now on. At least that's interesting. Uh, I took a peek at what they talked about today. I always find this incredibly interesting because the way they write their show notes are some of the worst show notes ever. Uh, To to start the show, they go around the room. God knows what that involves. Then they played a game. Guess the movie by only one word. Okay, so there's a game. Then they have another game. It's a replay of a game from Friday. Then they talk uh, current events. Tyson fight. And then it says teacher intercepts note. Don't know what that means. And it says Carmelo Anthony. I know who that is, but I don't know what happened. Then they played another game, Impression or Death. Then they talked about a story, a viral story about some kid who got bit by a snake and how expensive it was. Then they went back to Around the Room. Then they played some current event clips, which included sexual harassment, comma, bullet hits plane, comma, college game day kick. Mm. Then they played another game. Then the next segment, they played another game. And then they played another game. And then they played another game. I'm not kidding you. Four consecutive segments of fucking games. And then they talked a current event story. Then they talked, they had a local segment. They talked about the Lions. Their extra segment, 17, is described as rude people, comma, helicopter game ball. What the fuck does that mean? And facts of the day. So seriously, the descriptions for this show are fucking the worst. What does that make do to make you want to listen to that shit? How many games was that? How many segments consisted of games? Let's go over it. Uh, out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 segments. How many were games? 1, 2, 3, 4, Five, six, seven. Seven out of 13 segments are stupid fucking games. The Magic Misfit says, Dumber Than Zane was the pinnacle of balance. I don't want to play games all show. Exactly. You know what's beautiful about Dumber Than Zane? Once a week. So, especially if the jackpot's big. And you know, when it comes to talking shit, there's no one better. And that's a key element about Dumber Than Zane that is not uh, maintained on this pile of shit that they do every goddamn day. There's no one there to look anyone in the face and say, fuck you, you're stupid, which is what I would do. I would incense people. I would make them so angry when I would get on a massive winning streak and it was 500 bucks a pop. 500 bucks. Ugh. Molly says, I hate games and I hate interviews. If that's what your show goes to, bye. I don't mind interviews as long as it's good and interesting. You got to, you got to, you got to do, you got to ask interesting questions. You got to have interesting dynamic between you and who you're interviewing. You know, something interesting has to happen during the interview. You cannot rely on just the guest and their name to be interviewed, to be interesting alone. 
It's up to the person doing the interviewing to make it interesting. All right. But boy, during those days at Dumber Than Zane, that was fucking great. Uh, I used to really enjoy playing that game and, and we would make it a, uh, it would be a show. Each time we played was a show. Adam says, I remember you interviewing Ace Fraley. Oh, poor Ace. When he would say, with the line, I'm back. Ace, how are you? Hey guys, I'm back. Oh God. Never before has such, such an important uh, uh, member of the rock and roll landscape been more buffoonish. Ace Fraley. Matt H is here. He says, you need to call in to be a contestant on their games. Nah, my voice is too easily recognizable. I don't think they would let it go that way. I did call one time when I was trying to rebuild the relationship and played, um, name that tune with them. But, uh, those days are gone. Bob says he heard it. The impression game today should give you plenty of content. And I think Matt also heard it and he said it was a pile of shit. That game. Impression or death was fucking terrible. All right. Uh, locally, there's an organization and their name is um, Holy Cross Services. Holy Cross Services. Um, for years, what they do is they provide foster care and mental health services to those in need and shelter to dozens of communities across the state. All right. And that sounds wonderful. However, a memo went out that said, Hey, don't forget uh, the Catholics drive what we do. So, uh, you can't help out the gays. They sent a memo out. It says something to that effect. I'm paraphrasing. It said, fuck gay people. We only want to help out those that are not gay. And so a bunch of people got pissed off, including the CEO of the company. And well, they fucking fired them. So this is a fucking shit show wow so let's uh kind of unpack this oh shit fucking hang on a second i thought i had it now i got it all right here you go this is uh this is what's happening locally it's moments like this that makes me like, thank God I don't go to a Catholic church anymore. Controversy tonight over a letter sent out by the Holy Cross Services Board of Directors. The child welfare organization helps provide foster care, me mental health services and shelters to dozens of communities across the state. But today, its good work is being overshadowed by what some are calling anti-LGBTQ rhetoric. News Ace Megan Bunchman joining us now in studio with more on this story. Megan? Now, there was a letter sent to Holy Cross staffers back on November 5th that was meant to remind employees about the organization's stance on not engaging or promoting lifestyles that fall outside of the Catholic Church's <laughs> teachings. Since then, though, dozens of employees have submitted... You know, made-up rules. ...their own thoughts to the board of directors, objecting to what many say is anti-LGBTQ rhetoric. Behind closed doors in Lansing... Fr That's it? What a shithole. Looks like a white castle. Friday, the Holy Cross Services Board of Directors met to discuss, among other things, its latest email to staffers discussing the nonprofit's, quote, relationship to the gay and transgender community. We are required, uh, mandated by our religion, to open our services to everybody. Holy Cross Services will not advertise its services at Pride Day parades, for example. That has nothing to do with whether or not we will help people in need because we will help everybody. In and say, oh no, we've already been 
been here. But done. for employees turned protesters like Sarah Gilbert. We've been attending Pride events to recruit foster families for years. The controversial email, what she calls a new directive, is not only damaging to the foster families and kids they already work with, but a reversal in what their organization stands for. There are religious organizations that have these, um, you know, directives within their their bylaws and their policies and their rules, and that just isn't us. Since the initial letter was emailed to employees earlier this month, instructing them to, quote, not engage in any activity which promotes lifestyles that Holy Cross believes are damaging to human dignity, the group's CEO and other notable staffers have objected to and even challenged the legality of such instruction. The contracts that we engaged with the state clearly let us know that we are not to be uh, practicing any uh, discriminatory in any discriminatory way. Contracts and grants like a one and a half million dollar boost awarded to the nonprofit last December from the Michigan Department of Labor and Economic Opportunity. On Thursday, CEO Ryan Kuzelman told reporters with our sister station that the board's veiled discrimination could cost the organization millions of dollars in state and federal contracts. In the end, Kunzelman was fired, a disappointing but not necessarily unexpected move, says Gilbert, and the other dozen or so holy... He got fired? Why? This guy is going to sue the fuck out of these people. So here you go. So just because... They announced via memo, hey, we're not going to these pride parades. We don't want to be out in front of these gays. All right. We're still going to help the gays, but we don't want to let anybody know that we're helping the gays because we don't like those queers. So because of that, you're in danger of losing uh, more than a $1 million grant from the state. You're firing this guy and he's going to sue your ass. Yeah, this is really helping. All because you don't like somebody having a dick in their butt. Holy Cross employees who gathered outside the board meeting Friday to protest. It's a hit and it's a really, it's a hard one to take. Faith-based organizations have a statutory right under Michigan law to uh, provide these services uh, and the state can't discriminate against us. But these are all hypotheticals. It just hasn't happened because we are not declining to provide services to... Yeah, I don't, I don't like her. She's justifying what they're doing. And what they're doing is discriminatory. So the state might not want to give you their money. She's trying to uh, thread the needle to get the money and still say, fuck the gays, we're not going to the pride parade. I need to provide services to LGBTQ kids. As for what's next and if Holy Cross Services employees will follow the new mandate. We're not going to operate out of fear and we're going to keep providing the services we have because we haven't operated under this directive um, and we, we're not going to. Whenever anybody sends out a memo, says, hey, lighten up on the gayness. It always blows up in someone's face. The folks here at News 8 know all too well about this. Remember there was uh, in June a couple of years ago or something like that, uh, there was a couple of pride stories and then some asshole sent out a memo and said, no more gay shit. And he got fucking fired. It was a shit show. It just, this is what you need to do. You need to just say, ah, whatever. I don't give a shit. Uh, let's just support everybody. Let's just love everybody. No big deal. Let's let's not make a mountain out of a molehill. Come on, just shut up. No one's going to bat an eye. Now, I just spoke with the counsel for the board of directors about 20 minutes ago. She told me that while she can't get into too many details about today's meeting, Kunzelman was let go because of an investigation that was launched in September that didn't have to deal with the rhetoric around LGBTQ. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. But how he treated certain employees. She also confirmed that Sharon Berkebein, the former CEO, will now serve as interim president. She's got an enormous melon, by the way. Amber. Thank you. Are you tired of the same old time? Wow. Jesus. Yeah, and then it goes back to the whole Catholic thing. This is what makes me go, oh, thank God I'm not going there anymore. What? I was fucking brainwashed. Ugh. Uh, David says, isn't that their default view and why you don't go? Yeah, it is. Um, I think what it boils down to is them saying we're still going to help people but we do, we're not we're just not going to promote there at a at a pride event or something like that i think that's what gets people into trouble 
And once you can establish any type of discriminatory type of behavior, that no one's going to shut up. No one's going to just go away, at least not nowadays. Uh, if that um, if that type of uh, idea is ever like put forth, you know, and I think that that's what they're trying to uh, keep from happening. Uh, let's see. I guess Adam works by that place. Matt adds a uh, correction. They don't like someone vol- voluntarily have having a dick in their butt. Um, pretty much. Uh, Becky says, ain't no hate like Christian love. I've got uh, various family members that are uh, that are Catholic, and um, I just hope that no one ever says to me, "How come you don't go to mass anymore?" Because then I have to answer, "Well, it took a while for me to get it, but it finally got through my thick skull that it's not okay to have this discriminatory view of um, Christianity." And so that's why. And then what I always fall short in saying is, I guess you don't have any problem with that because I never want to pick a fight. But one day I think I might. Kenny says, new clip created. Now, I don't, I'm not really sure what I said. That could lead to a... Uh, a clip being created, but uh, I'll just have to check it out here. See what uh, what his handiwork is all about. Okay, here we go. They announced via memo, hey, we're not going to these pride parades. We don't want to be out in front of these gays. All right, we're still going to help the gays but we don't want to let anybody know that we're helping the gays because we don't like those queers. So because of that, you're in danger of losing uh, more than a $1 million grant from the state. You're firing this guy and he's going to sue your ass. Yeah, this is really helping all because you don't like somebody having a dick. I think we might have a subpar uh, hasty bit of editing there. I think I know what you were shooting for. But I think it, uh, it might've been clipped. Oh no. I appreciate the effort. I will never, ever, uh, talk bad about the effort to make a clip. Molly says, I hate the fact. People are telling me if I don't follow God and Jesus, I'm going to hell and not heaven. You know what I say to it? Cool. Me and Satan will chill together. He seems like a good dude. LOL, LOL, LOL. Yeah, it, uh, it's, it's bad. It, it's, it's never going to change. Hey, it's your old pal Z for my latest and greatest sponsor, Uncommon Goods. Wouldn't it be exceptional if you got a gift for that special someone, and when they opened it and took a look at it, they didn't immediately start to forget about it? It's time to up your game and get a fantastic, thoughtful gift with Uncommon Goods. Uncommon Goods were fantastic artisan-type creators make amazing gifts for you to check out. And it's all in one place. Uncommongoods.com The choices are endless. Go to uncommongoods.com and see what they have to offer. You could get lost on their website just looking at the fantastic gifts and you'll have to start writing it down. You're like, oh, this person would love this so much. Oh my gosh. All of your shopping will get done just like that. You're welcome. You'll get lost in a rabbit hole of awesomeness at uncommongoods.com. And when you shop at Uncommon Goods, you're supporting artists and small independent businesses. Many of their handcrafted products are made in small batches. So shop now before they sell out for the holiday season. This is what I want you to do. 
I want you to go to uncommongoods.com. And if you use my special code, you will get 15% off of your next gift that you purchase. Uncommongoods.com slash Zane for 15% off. Uncommongoods.com slash Zane. Don't miss out on this limited time offer. Uncommon Goods. We're all out of the ordinary. Um, I had a, a conversation with Madison. Speaking of um, our gay sisters and brothers and daughters and sons. Um, as you know, I talked about how uh, Madison is engaged. Ash proposed. And those two are now beginning their wedding planning. So here we go. Let's wind up the machine one more time. I guess we're doing venue shopping now. This started out as, um, and I think it's taken off, and I, I really don't have a, uh, I don't have a say in this. Stevie asks, have they set a date? I think it's in June. Um, so what started out as, and I, and I don't raise an eyebrow. I don't do anything. Okay. All I know is that when my daughters were born, I said, okay, well, I got to take care of their wedding when they grow up. And here we are. First, she says, all right, we're just going to do a courthouse wedding. It's not going to cost any money. I go, "Eh, whatever. She goes, will you pay for the beer or will you get us a sub from Jimmy John's? I go, "Eh, whatever. I don't care. And this is, uh, this is morphine now. Now there's uh there's there's new layers being added. And each layer is uh like dollar bills. So I'm watching this unfold. I guess there's uh venue shopping now. So I'm like, hmm, okay. So I think that that's what they're planning on. So there's that. And then uh now she's talking about a uh, custom wedding dress. And I'm like, cool. Hey, yeah, I'm all about it by all means. I mean, I don't bat an eye. I don't, I don't ever bat an eye. The second I bat an eye because, um, you know, I paid for Jacqueline's wedding. And so, you know, I got to offer this. Linda says she gets the same budget as Jackie. Of course. And I don't think it'll surpass Jackie's. Jackie's budget was ridiculous. I think we were north. I think we were somewhere between 30 and 50. Oh, my God. Various comments. He said, loving God, my ass. God hates everyone who isn't a white male. Well, that's what those wackos think, you know? but we all know that that's not the case. Uh, Kenny says their version of, or uh, Tophus says their version of God is a cunt. Shit. Uh, Jeremy comments on Kenny's uh, uh, clip. He said, Kenny, I'm not going to lie. That was terrible. Kenny says it wasn't his fault. Oh, I know that. I know it wasn't your fault. All right. Okay. So, uh, in fact, uh, Jacqueline uh, Madison, rather, uh, she hadn't hadn't yet told the NFK, uh, our sweet NFK, and she told him yesterday, and he about went to the roof. He was so happy was overjoyed. Um, and then we start talking about inviting who we're inviting. And, um, right away, there are people that aren't making the cut. And, uh, I said to her, I go, cause she's asking about various family members. And I go, look, um, as Chris writes, did you, are you? Yes, exactly. Um, various family members. And I go, um, well, I have a theory about that. And, uh, 
I don't know if you feel the same way as me, but you know, there are some family members who just don't haven't given a shit about anything you've done. They haven't been to one thing that you've ever, any important event they've been invited to and have never come. They've never even lifted one finger. So you can only invite limited people. I would suggest you invite people that are important to you and not worry about anybody else. It's your day. So if you don't want somebody to go, don't invite them. That's their own fucking problem. The way I look at it is if you have people in your life that are important to you, that's who you invite. If someone's not important to you, fuck them. Don't invite them. They had how many years you've been alive to be important in your life. And if they're not, tell them the fuck off. And if they bitch about it, give them two. Fuck you. Fuck you. Bob says, are we going to get another Gary story out of this? Boy, I can only hope. Um, I know this. It's been two years tomorrow since Jacqueline and Justin got married. And the NFK suit is still in the uh, uh, closet with, I think he got, uh, he's dropped a piece of pie on his lapel. It's all, it's still a stain on it. These are the pants that he shit in. And, uh, you know, I don't even know if he's going to fit in that thing. I know we'll have great stories out of this. I mean, let's be honest. Uh, my family, the stories that we've gotten out of my family have been legendary. The only way I'm able to make any type of um, progress in the world of podcasting and broadcasting is based on family stories. It's not me talking about the news. It's not me talking about a stupid show I watch. It's about these people. Matt says, the pants have pie on the outside and pudding on the inside. All right. Okay. Um, so that's just an unbelievable story. I wanted to get to that story about those scumbags at that, uh, at that place. I remember the huge snowstorm we had that day. Sarah picked me up and we white knuckled it down to the venue. Um, for Jacqueline's wedding, um, several people couldn't make it. Okay. And so at the last minute I, I reached out and I said, Hey, to audience members, Kyler Kuiper's. Sarah, Stevie, and I forget who else. But I said, I need I need seat fillers. So you're going to be your own table. Just come, eat and drink as much as you want. So Sarah, Linda, Linda, was Maureen there? Sorry that I forgot you. I have no memory of you there. Were you there? You guys couldn't have been there. Were you there? Yeah, we, we didn't go. You invited us. Okay, so anyway, I go, yeah, all the food you can eat, all the drink you can drink. Oh, my God. I remember Kyler walked in, and the jacket he had was so – he had gotten so fat that he goes, I can't even button it. If I button it, it's going to be like Chris Kyle's sniper. I go, all right. Uh, and then he starts pigging out. He starts drinking his ass off. Stevie may have had a few prior to getting picked up. And then she got bombed. And then she was like talking to my dad. And he's like, oh, hey, girl, how are you? He's acting like he's known her all his life. Oh, holy shit. And uh, that was that was quite a blowout. And then I remember I was dancing the um, uh, father-daughter dance with Jacqueline. And uh, he's doing butterfly kisses, the guy, the DJ. And his his shit kept fucking up. So the song was like, it was all weird. And, and uh, it was really awkward. And then I'm crying. All I wanted to do was cry in peace and just get the hell out of there. And then come to find out after the fact, that wedding was a COVID super spreader. 
and everybody got COVID at the table I was at. I got COVID. Pooh Bear got COVID. Um, uh, the NFK had COVID. Holy shit, was that a blowout. I got bored and uh, decided that I needed to walk around. So I went to the other floors in this venue and just started like checking for unlocked doors and, and looking for shit, people's desks to rummage through and stuff like that. And then there was a hot chick who worked for the venue that we were at. And my buddy Jimmy was there. He was the uh, minister. And uh, he's single. And uh, he was really like uh, this chick that worked there. She's really cute. And Jimmy goes, oh, my God, she's fantastic. I go, really? And he goes, yeah, boy, I'd like to meet her. I go, okay. So I go walking up to her. And I go, hey, I forget her name. But I knew her through working for the venue. I go, so my buddy Jimmy just thinks you're a knockout. And he wants to chat with you, but he's so damn shy. And uh, she goes, oh, the guy who was a minister. I go, that's the one. She goes, oh, well, tell him to come on over. So she's like, you know, ovaries are popping on this chick. And I go, buddy, congratulations. I'm hand delivering you uh, a fantastic lead to this young lady. And so he goes over there. Actually, I go over there with him. I go, hey, Jimmy, this is so-and-so. So-and-so, this is my buddy Jimmy. Well, I'm going to go get some uh, dessert. See you later. And I leave. And he fucks it all up. I don't even remember what happened. I just know it didn't work out. I also told him I'd never tell that story. But enough time has passed, and I'm even forgetting some of the details. But I was like, what the fuck? How could you have done that? I think he's dating somebody now, though. It's cool. Maureen says, is this Jimmy still single asking for a sister? Yeah, but Maureen's way too old. Not Maureen. Linda is way too old. She is, okay, Jimmy's like, I don't know, 43. And Linda's like 63. So I don't think that that's going to work. Stevie says, is today the two-year anniversary of the pants incident? Um, No, I think we're past it by like about two or three days. Barely. Like, the 19th is the wedding day, so I'm guessing it was the 17th of November, 2022. Um, I, I do know that This is also, it's like two years and a month since um, I wrote off an entire wing of my family. I've got this wing of my family who um, there was all sorts of drama that I never really talked about because of this wedding. And to this day, I've never spoken to them since over this, not because of the wedding, but because of some of the dynamic leading up to the wedding. I got into a huge fucking brawl with some of the biggest assholes that walk the planet earth so bad that I, I vowed never to speak with them ever again. And I saw them at one family event since then. And all I did was give them fucking stink eye. And the one cocksucker who was uh, leading the charge in this whole war against me and my family comes walking up to me at this, at this most recent event and he sticks his hand out and I look at him and I, and I put my hand out and I like touched his hand, but all the while I had this look on my face, like go fuck yourself. And then I happened to be sitting next to this, uh, his dad. And he tries to like introduce me and he thinks it's like, okay. And he starts talking and I go, look, I go, I get it. I know who this is next to me. It's fine. Don't worry. I got it. And Diana goes, Eric, I go, ah. And so this idiot walks away. I don't give a fuck. I can't stand those people. Oh, fuck. Cole says, grab his hand and pull him into a punch. All the while, you ever do that? You hate somebody and they put their fucking hand out. And then by reaction, you put your hand out. 
And then afterwards, like, why did I do that? I should have fucking spit in his fucking face. I hate that son of a bitch. Oh, fuck. He's on the list. I've got a handful of people that are never leaving the list. And that whole wing of the family is never leaving the list. And free beer. Okay? That's that's it. It's like Arya Stark. Holy shit. Um, Jeremy says, I'll take you, Linda, all the raw dog boning without the crotch goblin in nine months. Yes, please. Wow. I don't know if she's interested. Anyway. Yeah, I don't know if Linda's interested in anybody who says, I'll take you, Linda. Come on. Trust me. Linda's like ultra high maintenance. You got a wine and diner. I'm probably going to get my ass kicked over that one. Linda says, oh my God, Jeremy, what a generous offer. Matt says, Linda could help Jeremy work the fat off. Thank you to A&E Heating and Cooling. By the way, this is a big weekend for Michigan football. They win. They're bowl eligible to be able to go to like the shithead bowl. By the way, I don't know if you saw that story about they were trying to roll out the bank for that five-star recruit. And uh, the guy said, nope, not interested. I'm going to LSU. His quote was, I don't want to be hooked up with a shit program. Anyway, speaking of shit, Joe Martinez loves Michigan. 616-516-8579. I'm hoping and praying that Michigan loses to Northwestern. Joe is going to tune up your furnace for free. 616, oops, 516-8579 at 616-516-8579. Call and schedule today. The mortgage pros at the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage want you to call. Buy now, refinance later. It doesn't matter where you are in the U.S. 231-332-6505. That's 231-332. 6505 for the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage. We got a paintball place, TC Paintball. Remember them when the kids are bored during these cold months. Uh, book an event at TC Paintball today. Online at tcpaintballgr.com, fully stocked pro shop. Maybe you've got a bachelor party coming up. Great ideas, TC Paintball. Workplace team building. You'll have so much fun. Maybe a family reunion. I'd love to have one of those with my actual family and they get paintball guns and I get a real gun. When it comes to insurance, Frank Fuss is the only person you need. For life insurance, healthcare.gov insurance, Medicare or Social Security, Frank Fuss has you covered. Go to buyinsurancehere.com and fill out the contact form and he'll do the rest. If by chance he doesn't get back to you, tell me. Like if one day passes and he doesn't get back to you, tell me. And I love that because then I can say, hey, fuck face. Uh, Here's another hand-delivered audience member for you who wants you to get them all squared away with their insurance needs. Uh, Can you call them back? As always, Frank's services are free. He gets paid by the insurance companies. Finally, there is one chosen team when it comes to uh, tree care in West Michigan. Kuiper Tree Care. K-U-I-P-E-R. KuiperTreeCare.com. They are the experts for tree trimming, tree removal, stump grinding, 
uh, storm cleanup, tree risk assessment, all there. KuiperTreeCare.com. That's K-U-I-P-E-R TreeCare.com. Tophus says he's made a clip. Let's check it out. I have one of those with my actual family, and they get paintball guns, and I get a real gun. All right, not a lot of pizzazz on that clip. I think people need, if you're going to do clips, you have to be discriminatory. Like, I have to say something that's really out there. I think that makes more sense. I appreciate the effort. Tophus says that wasn't out there. No, not for me. You know the shit I've said? I want you to really think, wow, that's a fucked up thing he just said. I mean, it's okay, but, you know. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Okay. Uh, Last thing I want to share with you, Spirit Airlines is going belly up. And I don't think that uh, that really has anything to do with this clip. But here's a uh, in the wild video of a couple people that are employees of Spirit Airlines. And uh, one lady gets in the other lady's face. And then the other lady uh, starts talking some great shit. This is outstanding shit talking. Here you go. Bitch, don't play with me. Do not play with me. Do not play with me because I'm not the one or the two. Are you not the one or the two? Let's go. You ain't got shit to You ain't gonna do nothing. Why are you speaking on me for nothing? Like I said, keep my fucking name out your mouth, bitch. My my mind is always in yours for some reason. No, some reason. It always out of here. Get out of here before I smack the shit. You're not gonna smack shit. Try me. You think you're fucking up? I'm not trying to. Try me, ten people. I be done drop kicking your ass. Get out of here, you dirty bitch. I'm not dirty. Yes, you are. Get out of here. You and your raggedy ass fucking bitch. Out of here. Go suck a dick. Like I said, I said what I said. And I said what I said. Please step to me like you want it. Go suck another dirty dick. All right. That was uh that was glorious. Go suck another dirty dick? Ooh. That was something. Let me put it this way. If I'm in line there and I watch that, I'm like, ma'am, I just want to shake your hand. I need a picture with you. You are a goddamn legend. If you... If you, if you said, eat my ass, I would do it right here, right now. I would eat your asshole right here in front of everybody. Out of respect. Holy shit. She's a goddamn legend. Torf, uh, tof, Torfus, Torfus, Torfus says corn and all. Matt says, I don't get this joke. It says, I just pictured Aunt Jemima saying that to my pancakes. Man, that was something. Uh, The line, you go in number one, you ain't number one or number two. Is she saying, like, you're down the line? I'm not sure. I, in fact, let's just watch it all again. Bitch, don't play with me. Do not play with me. I like how she starts by knocking her down. Do not play with me because I'm not the one or the two. Are you not the one or the two? Let's go. You ain't got shit to go. You ain't going to do nothing. Why are you speaking on me for nothing? Like I said, keep my fucking name out your mouth, bitch. Keep my name out your mouth. Mine is always in yours for some reason. No, some reason. Get all the out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here before I slap the 
If I'm Spirit Airlines, I make her part of the bankruptcy proceedings. You dirty bitch. <laughs> yes, you are. Out of here. These swear words sound so much better when black people say them. I'm just going to say it. I, you know, there's just so much more personality in all things. It's just less ugly. It's just, it's a goddamn art form when shit like this comes out of A, a black person, or even more importantly, or more prominently, a black female's voice. It's just better. You and your raggedy ass fucking bitch. Fuck out of here. It's Go fuck art. Like I said, I said what I said. And I said what I said. Please step to me like you want it. Go suck another dirty dick. Yeah, when a black lady is on that type of roll, nobody gets in her way. There ain't a person alive that can stop that. That is a force to be reckoned with. That might be one of the more powerful things on the planet, frankly. Oh, my God. I am so turned on. Tofa says the line, please step to me like you want it. Yeah, that's all shit white guys can't say or white women can't say. We just, I was just there with, with my mouth open. You're a legend. I love you forever. Kenny says, that's how I would imagine the person Steve Harvey referenced on the original Kings of Comedy as Sister Odell would have talked when he spoke about realizing as a kid that there were people in church who cursed. Oh, God, was she great. Jeremy says, Linda, I'm breaking up with you and I'm going for that lady. What a personality. That's the type of assertive personality that though that woman is a bow wow, I mean, it'd be like fucking a tall Gary Coleman. It's still attractive. Wow. God damn, was that ex exceptional. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the asshole of the day. And the, I like these types of assholes of the day because it's just a little bit, one, ex, one extra step that I don't have to do because it's the same person as, as uh, Friday. Chris in Minnesota is a carryover asshole of the day over his horrible attitude about the Lions. Uh, we got ourselves all worked up and do it again because he's such a cock when it comes to our beloved Detroit Lions. You are not a Lions fan. You're out. Okay, you have to uh, you have to kick uh, kick or kiss the ring of Dan Campbell. That's what you have to do, and you need to apologize. Okay, for all your bullshit about the Lions. The Lions are fucking great, and everybody loves them. And you're the only dick in the world outside of Joe Martinez who thinks the Lions suck. So shut the fuck up. All right, that's gonna do it for me. Patreon bonus podcast coming up a little bit later on. Talk to you later. Thank you, folks. Bye-bye.